for making it such an amazing event. I'm pretty sure this is the first one and the more events to come in the future are going to create much more impact and the type of lifestyle and the quality of life that we all see in, in the future we want to live. Hope it takes us into that kind of direction. So today I'm going to talk to you uh, about very interesting stuff on uh, developing a sustainability with cannabis uh, to evolve nations. Um, it's uh, mainly, uh, mainly based on the regions where cannabis grows wild and wherever cannabis or hemp, as people call it with different names, it's available in different countries. Uh, we want to shine some light uh, in this part of the world or this region where cannabis has a different it comes in a different form, you know, so and what this, the, the form in which it's available, how can we be sustainable in that way? So whenever we talk about sustainability, the own, it always comes down to understanding what it really means. So it is the avoidance of the depletion of natural resources in order to maintain an ecological balance. We are very concerned of the type of environment we're living in, the type of quality of life we have, how we are impacting our lives and how we are impacting our environment, and how can we evolve ourselves into a better um, state of living, as you can call it. We, I have a basic, uh, I have a narrowed down or summarized some things into a few key factors through my experience. What causes some kind of a sustainable, to move into that kind of sustainable paradigm. Uh, something in the form of an ecological and sustainable construction practices, uh, which are, like uh, Wolf said, 51% of the construction waste, uh, like uh, the most pollution is caused by industrial. So we have to find ways in which uh, we can be sustainable in our energy practices of construction and the knowledge of utilization of resources to know the resources in front of you and what you can do with those. For some person, anything lying on the ground can be gold for the person, just dirt. So we need to understand that and how we can uh, see, it. like what we're seeing right now, the impact of our ecological damage caused by massive industries and how that can be reduced into a very small scale sustainable industries, which uh, have lower footprint and lower impact on the environment, but yet still produce a high quality product. And uh, having all of these and plus you need to have the people who are aware and have the knowledge or want to learn or have that uh, sense of understanding of you know, what is necessary, you know, what you need to know, what you need to learn in order to survive and have a sustainable quality of life. So in all of these things, the socio-economic, cultural, environmental, all these aspects get combined and you can expect some kind of a massive uh, evolution of a standard of the whole civilization or a group of people or a community in whatever scale you can think about. So, are these just an idea or is it really a reality? That can you make this into something practical? And uh, or these kind of things are just theory. You know, we never know in how many years it will come into practice. When will we evolve and stuff? But by seeing what the UN has proposed, these are the basic foundations on which uh, we are leading ourselves into this kind of an evolved uh, environment and being an evolved society. This is nice to nice for you to have categorized a lot of issues into these 17 goals that we want to solve in order to evolve into a better quality of life in a sustainable lifestyle. Um, and uh, in in the context of Asia, especially since we are here, and what we can think of uh, sustainability, what kind of resources we have. And uh, one of the things that always comes up is how cannabis is such an important plant in providing much of the products and manufacturing and the quality of life that we can expect from this. And also along the way it can amazingly tick mark all of these 17 
goals that UN has created. So this is a very nice point in our lives that we are at this phase where we are talking about cannabis, hemp, and all these kind of ecological materials and sustainability, and then UN comes up with these goals. There are like, it looks like it is meant for each other, that it is a foundation for us to lead, to use these goals and to build, develop our life and our business in this manner so that we can you know, have a better outlook in our society and environment. And one of the main interesting aspects of using cannabis, uh, having cannabis available in Asia and compared to other countries, you might have to grow cannabis in other countries. It might not be growing. It might have used to grow a while before, but uh, through industrialization, everything got cut down, so there's no more natural plants growing anywhere. But we're fortunate to be in this third world country where things are not so developed and we still have a lot of empty lands where civilization, villages, towns have not developed or have ruined the nature in that way. In Kathmandu city, just maybe 10 years ago, you would see along the river, you would see big, big plants, cannabis plants just growing wild. But now they cleaned up everything, made the city nice and clean, they're developing it and stuff. So this is the cost of development. We are getting all our natural resources uh, uh, you know, removed from us. So we need to understand what is going on and what we can do. And it's not just Nepal, it is, Indi it is India, Thailand, China, Mongolia, Russia, Vietnam, whatever country you think of, all of these countries have cannabis growing wild in some part of the world, in some regions of their countries. So it is nothing new to have cannabis growing in, in this way, in the world, and how can it be actually used? Um, since you have cannabis growing wild in itself, you have solved one of the problems of create, you know, preparing your land and sowing the seeds. All you have to do is just harvest everywhere. And it grows so fast and so much of abundance. If you don't do anything to it, it'll keep on growing and growing and you will have abundance of abundance of resources literally to play around, do whatever you want, you know, uh, sustain your communities and uh, live that kind of life. So we take this UN, uh, these 17 goals as a, as a very nice uh, model or, um, or a checklist, you know, whenever we do all of our work and see if we, if we are resonating with these goals or not. So, and we have the goals, we have the tools, and cannabis is one of the best tools. I, I repeatedly say all the time, it's one of the most amazing tools to have at our disposal and in abundance to really you know, make endless things that you can think of. Um, from the previous history of what has been said of how they used to make all kinds of materials before the ban, how the ropes used to be made, sails, textiles, biofuel, plastics, cars, whatever. So it is there. Now we need to take the next step, use all of those things in the 21st century and take to the next level of advanced manufacturing, advanced small scale, uh, which is the future. Small scale processing and small scale development of all of uh, production, manufacturing, fulfilling basic necessities and fulfilling your requirements as per se. So it's a very nice way that the UN has put this up and they have even categorized it into three groups uh, as people, ecological, spiritual. And uh, somehow it really resonated with the same uh, kind of model which we created uh, when we started our company in 2015, which we call empowering bottom up. We want to start from the bottom of the society and strata and move higher into and fulfilling all of the basic goals of people and for the ecological and the spiritual. It's just like one of those uh, pyramids, the Maslow's triangle of uh, necessities, as you can say. Uh, I will briefly uh, talk about these things. Uh, tomorrow, Hannah will give you a detailed introduction as she was in one of the UN conventions to formulate these goals and help in understanding, creating a report on this. 
So the, the first goal that they say about is no poverty, is to end poverty in all of its forms everywhere. Now to, they want to end hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. Good health and well-being to ensure a healthy life and promote well-being for all ages. I think everything, I, I, every statement that I make about this, I think you can think that how cannabis is making a tick mark in it, you know. It is fulfilling all of these things by a way big margin that nothing else can compete after this. Uh, even ensuring inclusive, equitable quality education and promoting lifelong learning opportunities for all, uh, achieving gender equality and empowering all women and girls. You have your availability of sustainable management of water and sanitation, clean energy with um, uh, hemp plus, uh, hemp batteries and all those things. Uh, promoting sustained, inclusive, sustainable economic growth and full productive employment industry innovation and infrastructure and uh, we have reduced inequalities in income inequalities within among countries so these are the things that really impact uh, the people and the society and communities who who and it is directly involving them and this is uh, how what are the key steps that we need to follow in order to make uh, some changes or improve the quality of life. And I don't think it's just in third world countries. It, it extends up to first world countries also now. I mean, when, you, when we talk about these goals of the people, these goals are not just the goals of the third world countries, the poor countries. These are the goals established for the people worldwide. Yeah, we have come to a point, no matter your first world, second world, third world, we all have the same problems now. We are all dealing with uh, poverty, hunger, unemployment, having good uh, health, you know, it's, it has become a major concern for everyone. So we, I mean, now it has become a common issue rather than just being divided into categories of people. So now we're all in this together, you know, somehow. So, and it's a good start and a good tool to have to make this, uh, to use uh, cannabis and help at least the people elevate their basic standards of living and quality of life. So once you have your environment, your person, people's quality of life is up at par um, by having their basic necessities as you call food, clothing and shelter, basically if you can summarize them, they're fulfilled, then you can go into having much more uh, developing your communities in that way, having responsible consumption and production, being aware of what kind of footprint and impact you're making in your community. Um, also understanding your whole ecosystem of earth, land, water, air. You know, where are you and what are you, you know, contributing in your environment. And also once, uh, and then on top of that, when you have fulfilled your basic um, ecological needs, you have, you have a way, a nice way in which you can have a good, um, uh, a good collection or a contribution with people to have a sustainable development practice and to provide justice and to help each other, help communities, countries worldwide and interact on a common mission to have um, a sustainable development mission. So I think uh, these are also very far-fetched uh, um, goals. I mean, these are goals. So they will they have set 2020, 2030 goals, agenda 2020, and things like that to achieve these things in a certain point period in time. Uh, we are also we have that is um, also what we are doing. So this is uh, this is actually a real life implementation of what we have uh, done till now. And throughout our work since we started uh, in 2015, after the earthquake of Nepal, which you guys might uh, have heard in some point, it's been quite some time. Um, we, uh, I, was, I was studying abroad and when I heard about the earthquake, I moved back to Nepal and then what we can do with hemp and how we can at least help to rebuild the country. So in that context, I founded the company Shiv Shah Hemp Ventures to work uh, and to 
to find proper solutions in which we can uh, be sustainable and uh, not be affected by such natural disasters and have solutions all the time available. So these kind of things, you know, it's a natural disaster which we cannot predict. But we have solutions at hand and tools at hand all the time, regardless of the condition. Um, it was easy to really <coughs> work because uh, of the availability of the naturally growing cannabis surrounding the country and everywhere, and plus an existing seed and a textile market, uh, cottage industry that has been existing ever ex ex existing for a long time. You know, so. These kind of things give a very nice outlook and a good foundation on which we can do a lot of implementations of the ideas of sustainability, eco-friendliness, you know, taking condition, taking uh, you know, consideration of uh, the skill development of people, you know, giving them jobs and finding different kind of opportunities. Uh, so we are basically a re hemp research, development and a manufacturing company. So what we do, um, it, it is mostly all need based. So we do, we are doing uh, R and D in small to medium scale hemp stock processing is what we get as a raw material from the villages and stuff. And also, since it was established in the context of the earthquake, we one of the first thing was to um, do some R and D and to. Um, find out how we can build with him and how the binder works, what kind of ingredients and things like that, what is locally available, what do we have that we can use, you know, and to find local solutions for these kind of problems. Um, even uh, exploring furthermore into developing what is necessary as we always refer to as food, clothing and shelter to have at least these three basic necessities fulfilled for everyone. So understanding how you can make your basic of cosmetics and textile products because you don't know what is in these kind of products that are sold in the market. You know, they might uh, all chemical based or what not and it has, it has shown to cause a lot of allergy, cancer and all kinds of diseases to people. So there has to be, it has to stop somewhere and the direction should change so that we can use like good quality natural products, you know. And all of this is not possible without the help of the local people. So even though there is a lot of people looking for work, you know, there are there is a lot of work to be done, but there are no jobs. You know? So this is skill development is necessary so that people develop some skills and understand new things which they are not exposed to through their education in schools and also a lot of skill development and uh, training is required to really uh, help in understanding the whole ecosystem of manufacturing and all those kind of things. So we, we employ unskilled people and basically we skill them. And when they get skilled enough, they move on, develop and learn more things. So it is a continuous creating of skilled job, skilled people. So one of the first uh, things uh, I would like to showcase what we have done with uh, our work in Nepal, in Janakpur. We are very happy and fortunate to have Steve Allen come over to Nepal uh, in 2016 and help us with uh, initiating the concrete construction project of a hospital. So in the beginning when we had nothing, we started off with chopping it by hand. At least, you know, we can start somewhere, get some things done, and keep building after that. So, we, we build this uh, structure with uh, um, locally lime and the clay, and we did plasters with the clay, and we, we did the local um, paint that you find in the market. So really, using local materials, finding local solutions. And it's very easy to import things from different places and get the work done. But to develop and uh, to find local solution is really exciting. And it is challenging, but it is really worth it in that way. Um, since we really focus uh, also through our, through our goals of providing basic necessities to people, we also have uh, a social project which, uh, which was called also Empowering Bottom Up. 
Mm, through that project, we were very fortunate to have um, HempPro and Hemp Consult to sponsor us for constructing one of the houses. Uh, after we got the funding to build the house for a marginalized family, um, uh, we were also blessed with having two of the biggest um, builders around Europe. One is uh, Lauren from France and a uh, clay expert from Luxembourg, Gilbert. So both of them were just roaming around Nepal looking for something to do and somehow they contacted Steve and then we got in touch and they just came right over and we started building instantly. So it, is, it has been amazing cooperation throughout the world with different kinds of people and everything who are moved and who want to move with that kind of mission. You know, to really make use of their skills, use local materials and build different kinds of things. So it, has, it, was, it was an amazing experience. We built with clay and hemp, with lime, lime plasters, bamboo construction, you know, everything local. So it's, it's really fun to see what you can achieve with things that are just around you. Uh, in an ideal situation, you can actually build your house for no money at all. You just need resources, you need materials, no money. So if you can have all the resources around, at least it's just cost free. After the success of that project, uh, of a social construction project, uh, we kept getting uh, <coughs> contacts from people like we want to help this guy build a house, this family is very, uh, requires help and things like that. So th this was a house that was affected by a flood that went through the house. So it is just a small construction that we, that we thought, yeah, we can do this, a really, really interesting project to do. So instead of building a small house, we built like one and a half story construction just with bamboo. Uh, we had Halis Selassie and his uh, friends from uh, France, um, a, um, a Buddhist couple. They were really interested by the work that we do, so they supported us with building this house for this uh, lady. And we, in these kind of projects, we we ask the people whose house we're building, we tell them that you have to work for the house. You know, you can't get the house for free. So she, she was the one who was delivering the clay, the water, everything with us on the construction site, building with us. And it was an amazing experience building this house with them in such uh, harsh conditions, in rainy, in very, in very claustrophobic, very small areas, doing whatever we can to get this thing done. Even though it's hard, but it was a very uh, pleasant experience to have been building this house. Uh, apart from the social projects, when we should, when we build the hospital, a uh, lot of people, since it is in a public place, a lot of people came and they want to know more about it. What is this kind of material? What is this? What are you guys doing? You know, and as soon as I say lime, we were, we are using lime and hemp. You know, so they say lime. Oh, I know that lime. They are the really good materials. You know, they they keep you cool in the summer and warm in the winter. We used to have those in our old houses before, but we don't have them anymore. But this is a very common thing that I would hear from a lot of people. And uh, in the villages, we don't have those knowledge anymore. So we would like, so we're like reinventing the whole thing that is getting lost. So um, showing people the, how to use their materials, what was available there, and. Um, these are some of the products of those constructions of people who got really interested and they wanted to just build something with it. And so one of one client of ours, a doctor, he built a Montessori school up uh, in the southeast of Nepal. Uh, even this farmhouse is on a mango farm for the car to stay. So this is also in the, and our textile workshop that we just recently built also. So, we're, we're always doing all kinds of building construction experiments, helping building for interested people. We never advertise as such. We are we're working on our we're doing our work constantly, and we get people contacting us like, "Hey, I I found out that you make hemp houses. Can you build me this house?" So that way, we directly get into the work. We don't need to even ex sit and explain them. These are the benefits of this house. You know these properties, all of that, they already know it. So 
it's nice to see that people are doing their research and understanding what hemp is and they come to you for the, the solution. So this is one of the um, main, a uh, huge large construction that, uh, that we started like uh, two months ago. Uh, this is a, a children's hostel on a, on a mountain top uh, in Helamwara, four hours north from here. So it's a four-story building. So they'll have a restaurant. Uh, first floor is all accommodation. We have a yoga and all those kind of things. So they're still building this. Uh, and these guys have been amazing. I went there for a week. I taught the main guy, the main mason, how to build with him. Um, showed, you know, showed him what can go wrong, what can go right. And after that, these guys have never stopped. These guys have been building like crazy. So, so, so you can just see, like every day they send a picture, like we have done this, we have done this. So it's exciting, like, you know, they're, they're so, they're also amazed and we like, we see this interesting uh, support from people and un understanding that I mean, this material is really amazing that it can work. And uh, it will actually be a very eco-friendly and uh, nice place for the children and all to stay and a good environment to be in. And so I'm very happy for the client to be very thoughtful of that and uh, being able to build such a house in such a remote place. Um, it's, it's a lot of hard work, but I mean, we have these kind of really dedicated, crazy people who will go to any limit to do anything. So we're very happy that how people are taking it, what kind of foundation we're creating, how they think about the ecological impacts, and what they feel is necessary, you know. So this is really propagating amazingly around a huge community. Uh, along with uh, constructions, our R&D goes into even making machines to understand how we can process. Till now, there aren't much machines available in the world. You have these small, you know, all of the machines are mainly World War II, pre-World War II era machines, or you have uh, the largest scale industrial machine. There's nothing that can go at a smaller scale. So we are always uh, seeing, uh, getting machines and seeing and finding a good solution that can uh, solve our problems. I mean, our, our hemp stalks that we get range from like a finger thin to a really thick tree kind of stalk. You know? So some stalks that are like five years, ten years old, they become really thick. And the normal decodication will just, you know, the, they won't be able to handle the processing those kind of materials. So it is really dynamic uh, setup, and machines have to be, you know, have to be developed. And we are doing a lot of experiments in finding out what kind of problems we can face and what all we can need, what kind of how to further process the materials, you know, uh, other kind of understanding a whole sub a processing line, a small scale processing line, what what would be the best efficient way to have uh, proper production or a processing of uh, materials at a small scale. Um, we, are, we are supporting the existing textile industry of uh, Nepal, uh, where the villages of the west part of Nepal where cannabis uh, grows very widely in large quantities. Uh, that is where we've, uh, we've got these uh, fabric that you have the bags for the summit. All of these fabrics uh, come from the western part of Nepal. So this, this fabric is, uh, the stalks are retted by hand, extracted by hand. A lot of um, the yarns were spun by hand. And only those yarns come to Kashmandu for further weaving and, and a hand loom. And the still, you can see the fabric is not so fine, so you cannot use it in a power loom. So these are all handmade. Uh, so it is a complete handmade product, the textile product. So the fabric is handmade, and all the the products that go on after the after using the fabric, they're all made by hand. And in our textile unit, we we employ women who are. Uh, who don't have a work or anything, they're sitting home idle, nothing to do. Uh, I mean, before you used to see women just sitting outside weaving, at least something, knitting or doing something. 
Now there is nothing, just on mobile phones, you know. So at least they, 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 could, they, can be, they can be taught something or given some task that, that would give them a nice uh, way to spend their time and, uh, you know, care for a family in some way. So we, we invite these women to come and work with us. We we'll teach them how to make bags, how to make things that they want or whatever. So some of the women, they made their bags for their own kids for school bags. So that was an amazing experience that the mothers were really making the bags for their own kids. So this, this is just bags and small stuff, but this can extend to whatever you can think of, you know. So the possibilities are endless and it should always be the way the needs are, the way the needs are fulfilled. Um, we get seeds in our market very uh, abundantly available wherever, wherever you go in Kashmir, in the supermarket, you'll see bhang seeds available. So it's a, it's a common commodity, a common pickle that um, everyone eats. You know, there's nothing new or shocking about it, uh, having hemp seeds or anything. So furthermore, we, we utilize those, just mix stuff that we feel that is necessary and important for people around and what you can actually achieve with these kind of things which are locally available. And even uh, these are just basic chemistry. I mean, making soap with basic chemistry, you can even do more amazing things. So this is also a good way that you can learn new things, technical things, and uh, it's, it's also a good foundation of uh, new science of learning along by creating products and uh, having a good uh, quality of life. So when when we the we we have we see that we have fulfilled uh, some sort of a basic necessity, a basic sustainability that you can create your food, clothing, and shelter in some way. And the next phase, if you uh, and that's not the we would like to really explore more, find new things, you know, like to venture into new ways. So we want to move into a more advanced sustainability way rather than from basic. So when you think about advanced sustainability, everything else that comes in, which was uh, created after the Industrial Revolution, the post, uh, the whole modern era, you can call it, with all the technology and all the other things that we have so massively become dependent upon. So we have to also realize what kind of potential we have, availability of, um, of the plant as a tool, what it can provide, what are its characteristics, and what what you should produce and how you should produce, um, using what kind of machines, you know. So it's a it's a we have come to a point where the possibilities are massively endless. You can literally make anything that you desire out of hemp in your house, in your kitchen. You know, it is, it, is, it has come to that. And this means it's very advanced, you know, very modular, very simple system. And um, I don't see it uh, like you know, taking so much time to be able to do this. I think all of these things that are in the picture are already there. You, know, you can you have glass, uh, you can literally have hemp glass in such a way. Glasses to batteries, you've seen it working by degree plastic has already become old news. You know, so uh, there are more and more new things being developed every day and we're just so excited to be uh, in this movement and to see everything grow and what we can achieve from these kind of things. So whenever uh, it's, uh, we know what we have the vision, what we can achieve with everything that we have around us as cannabis as a tool. Uh, we need to keep in mind how we can achieve all of these things while being sustainable in, uh, in a way that you never have to uh, exert more of, uh, more of extra to make the same outputs, you know. And that can always be fulfilled on focus on what, in, what you need than what you want. Wanting is something that you go into mass production. And what you need is a very sustainable development or sustainable manufacturing. Small scale manufacturing, um, producing things that are sustainable and can be recycled. You know, the waste can be, that waste, once that product goes out of use, that can be used for something else. You, know, you, you can use something that you've used as a fertilizer after in the next cycle. 
and providing necessary, you know, develop necessary solutions to the local world problems. All the problems are very similar around the world. The solutions are also very similar. It might be at a different degree, intensity of what on how you want to solve a problem in that region. And I think once all of these things are good in a way, we can have a really good evolution of our mankind for better quality of life. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Niraj. Uh, truly inspirational uh, work. Uh, that Niraj and the Vita are doing. 